Most work environments, if I said what was on my mind at any given time, I'd be fired or sued or at least tackled to the ground. But here they pay you for it. So the primary issue isn't the availability of healthier meal choices, but the number of students actually choosing them. If kids aren't picking those options, I can't justify paying for them. And it's not like I can force apples on them. So pizza becomes a vegetable. That's why we want to change the paradigm. Collectively, we believe it isn't so much about the options on the table, but rather how you sell those options. Presentation and perception. Bottom line is, healthy foods aren't marketed. So, we've tackled the problem all the way from toddler to teen. Margo, Grit. Studies indicate that one in every three elementary school students is overweight or obese. And I can relate, being a formerly husky youngster myself. <laughs> We have our own sort of private sub think tank just to help out Brit. I signed him up for Grinder, and I do feel bad about that, but I thought maybe he just didn't know how to express those feelings. We were led astray by false heroes on colorful packages. I think who what Brit is trying to say is that fast food mascots are by far the most recognizable fictional characters. 96% of school aged children can identify Ronald McDonald, which is actually more than Santa Claus and Jesus. Some of us don't think Jesus is a fictional character. Margot's great. Margot reminds me of my mom a lot. A few months ago, I started replacing Margot's low-fat yogurt with high-fat yogurt, and she's like, why am I gaining so much weight? And it was me, and she still doesn't know. That was awesome. So what you need is an equally catchy mascot for nutritious foods. May we introduce the Fruity Friends? A balanced group of ethnically diverse school-age fruits who love learning and respectful social interaction. Plus, they are ridiculously popular and good-looking, and every other fruit desperately wants to be them. First up, we have Anastasia Apple, top of her class, and she plans on attending an Ivy League school on a cello scholarship. And there is her on-again, off-again love interest, B. Nana, who, against his parents' wishes, battle raps in underground clubs after school because there ain't nothing more appealing than that potassium feeling and I got these bitches real and I'm B. Nana. His blood pressure is crazy low. And then we have Strawberry Suzuki. She solves antioxidant-related mystery. Make way for the battle-hardened private pomegranate whose impenetrable shell protects a hidden sweetness inside that he guards with an ancient katana. Thank you. But in my experience, kids are oversaturated with these images. They're numb to it. But you haven't met Mifumi Mango. He's a distance runner. Mrs. Abramo, let's shift our focus to teens for a moment. What is, hands down, the most effective marketing technique? Sex. Sex. Sex sells. Appeal to their instincts, their most base human urges. That sounds pretty controversial. Absolutely, and that's why it works. Many have suggested that Patrick is special, that he has something in the spectrum. I have a 20-year plan. I have a one-year plan and a five-year plan. I have a 7.5-year plan, a 12-year plan, and a 20-year plan. And my 20-year plan, it's similar to my one-year plan. Keep kicking ass. You associate healthy foods with sex. Not only do you get teens interested, but you'll have the PTA ordering them to look away. Which is exactly the way to get them to pay attention. The sensual curves of a freshly picked radish. The soft, silky texture of an avocado-like velvet sheets in your mouth. Is it fantasy? No. It's salad. I love Tay Diggs. I love him. My mother loves Tay Diggs. I love Tay Diggs, he's not Tay Diggs. But he thinks he's Tay Diggs, and that's a problem. He and I went to see The Avengers together. And that's not just a movie you see with anyone, that's a movie you say for someone special. And I, I like to think that uh, we have that Jeremy Renner, Scarlett Johansson vibe, he and I. Low calorie for a tight body, Vitamins for endurance. Two luscious tomatoes nestled softly on a bed of lettuce, as if to say, hey girl, Get your ass in here. There's always room for one more with salad. Carrots. Just wet, dripping carrots. Salad. Oh. It's alluring. Salad. <gasps> it's provocative. Salad. <gasps> I gotta get it inside me. I like it. To be perfectly honest, I'm very compelled to eat salad right now. I kinda want a salad too. But you understand that it's not a feasible option. Well, Mr. Bramo, it is our job to present you with the options we feel would be most effective, regardless of how controversial they may be. I was hoping for something that could be utilized for all ages. Oh, well, then I think Sophie has an idea that just might interest you. 
The basis of all human instincts, Mrs. Abramo, is not sex. Ah. It's fear. She wears a lot of turtlenecks, let's put it like that. I don't draw, but I, this is, I found the eye in team. Sure, you can appeal to kids' enthusiasm, or you can frighten them so much it shakes them to their bones. I'm listening. I see problem after problem in our world, and I know that humans have the capacity to solve them. But it seems that at every chance we get, we fail to live up to our potential. We can put a person on the moon, but we haven't figured out anything better than tennis balls on walkers. <laughs>